art as a medium, and particularly, yes, yeah, spaces and installations, is that you're able to like directly access the viewer's senses in every way. You can work with them visually, sonically, across time, you know, temporally, you can make smells, you can do whatever, and all of that can serve to directly access sort of the heart, the mind of the person, to like directly invite them to feel a certain way. <laughs> okay, that's not a hole, that's, that's ventilation. Digital art problems, yeah. <laughs> um, and I, you have about 16 feet before USB starts to degrade. Um, so this is about the, the you know, biggest length I can use. So the... Uh, rather than it just sort of being a, uh, a monologue of my assertion about this thing, um, to be able to make it an actual dialogue where the viewer is present in the work itself, I don't know, became sort of interesting to me. But I started including sounds within uh, my photography and shows, and they started to migrate towards installation. Then I realized that uh, I want to include some kind of participation from the audience. 
So I started uh, enabling sensors that uh, regulated sounds within the rooms based on people present that led me to uh, inclusion of projection, then projection made medical my photography and then almost refusing to do photography all, uh, all, uh, at all. I started my first job out of Pratt was actually at the Brooklyn Children's Museum where I actually learned about the process of developing interactive exhibits um, and started my own company about seven years after working there um, and have branched out into from children's museums into history museums, National Park Service, visitor centers, science museums. Well, they're fully immersive experiences first, but then there's interactives that deal with specific content. So we're using interactive experiences to sort of extend a story and engage the audience in something other than reading. I mean, it's not about directly accessing the senses, but I think it's about being sort of unrestrained, if you come up with some means to get your viewer to arrive at a certain point, a certain thought, a certain process, you can do it without any real restriction in digital art or in installation because it's sort of transmedia, it's, it's kind of everything. A lot of it is, you know, playing games or moving, moving narratives forward through sequencing or full body interaction. We've sort of used a lot of different techniques, so it's a pretty broad array of stuff. I'm interested in making things that communicate or invite people to think or do a specific thing. As long as that happens, as long as I get an opportunity to make that gesture or make that invitation, then I'm pleased. You know, then that is remarkable that someone would choose to allow me to do that with them. I mean, I think I think there there are interactive pieces which are very compelling that I want to live with them. I'm not sure would they be good for a museum, like an art museum as an experience for the visitor. Yeah, I think so. I think they're much more suited for public experience and consumption than they are for private collection. A lot of uh, new galleries understand that interactive pieces can be showstoppers. That, um, that viewers like to interact with the world. They are interested because it still has a you know, taste of novelty. So a lot of, um, a lot of commercial galleries, uh, or these galleries which I work with, would get an interactive piece because it would help or strengthen the shoot the big show that they have and put them on the map and put them more on the map. Uh, the, good, uh, the good thing about interactive art is that it's not yet commercialized. And that's why it's empty from a lot of issues that, uh, that uh, a, commercial and, uh, a commercial artist deals with. Uh, there is much more honesty, there is much more room for interpretation, and uh, there is actually space to work.